All right. The, the meeting is being recorded, so it's official. Um, Monday the 25th um, for the Benefit Counselors Call, excuse me, California Small Manufacturers Trust Training. Um, Andrew Tierce is leading the call. We've got uh, a bunch of nice folks on, Jonathan Monroe. John, are you the only one from Gallagher that's on the call? I am. Okay. Um, so th Jonathan, thank you for um, you know selecting Colonial Life as the. I'm going to ask a favor. Maybe if everybody, uh, unless you're going to be a speaker, could you mute your phone? There's a bunch of background noise. I'm not sure what it is, and maybe that'll take care of it. Oh, that sounds better already. Nice. Oh, I thought so. It's back. Anyway, um, so today is going to be the training call, um, and we're going to record it. There will be passwords um, throughout the uh, three different places throughout the call, and uh, that way, for those of you that are listening in on the training call that are not in attendance today, uh, you'll be able to give those passwords to Andrea, and then she will know that. Um, everyone listened all the way through the entire training segment. Um, so for me to start, all I want to do is to say thank you again to Jonathan and Gallagher for um, trusting us to enroll these cases again this year. And uh, we look forward to serving you guys and your clients um, again. I think this will be the third or fourth enrollment. So, um, Jonathan, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, you're being recorded for Prosperity, and uh, so if you want to make a couple opening comments, and then Andrea is going to uh, lead the call. Great. Thanks, Mike, and uh, thank you all for making the time to be on this. Uh, we're very excited about another year. Uh, I know many of you have enrolled this product before, and so this is probably just a refresher. Some of you may be new to it, uh, so I will give an overview first of of the trust program itself, uh, the essentials that, that uh, pertain to you. But then at any point during the call, if there's any questions of clarification, please chime in, or of course at the end. Uh, so first, uh, for those of you that are newly being introduced to this, um, just as a brief preface, so this program is uh, uh, it's a special employee benefits program whereby we're able to offer the same plans and rates to all the members. So there's all of these businesses that we'll be doing these enrollments for are all part of the same uh, program. So the things we're going over today will be the same plans and rates that all of them have access to. That being said, uh, as Andrea said at the outset, some of the groups uh, choose to offer some of the plans, some of them choose to offer more than others. So while the whole portfolio is there for them, for them to select from, some employers will, will choose to offer some of the plans and others um, different ones. In addition, there will be some groups that have some other plans uh, alongside of the ones that we're, we're reviewing today. Um, in, the, in the guide for each one of them, the enrollment guide for each of the groups, anything that's unique or different from what we review today will be in there. Most notably, what you'll probably see is a lot of the groups have Kaiser alongside of it. Now the Kaiser plans and rates are unique for each group, so that's why we're not. There's nothing for us to review here because one, some groups don't have Kaiser alongside of the Health Net, um, or and even those that do, there are different plans and different rates for each group. So again, in the enrollment guide for each group, it'll have any specifics that are uh, in addition to what we cover today. So I know Andrea provided a list of uh, material. Now most of it is just there for your reference. Uh, there might be situations where you might get questions uh, and, and on maybe the detailed uh, benefit coverages of a particular item. As a result, all of the detailed benefit summaries are there and you'll have access to. But for the purposes of today's call, what I really just want to do is uh, give an overview of all of the plans and just the highlights. So Mike, uh, if, you, if you're the one controlling it, in that email there was uh, the master CSMT report presentation or Andrea, whomever it is. Yeah, so which one do you want me to pull up? The, the, the master the, CSMT renewal presentation, the, which is the Excel file. The Excel file. Okay, that's what I'll pull up right now. Can everybody see my busy laptop? <laughs> Not yet. I, Not yet. <laughs> oh, I clicked show my screen. Well, let me go back and do that. In the meantime, let's uh, um, try to think of a good phrase for, for uh, 
for the password uh, to give out. And we'll do the first password right now while I'm uh, going back to open up to sh click show my screen. Let's see. No, it, it, it look because uh, I thought Mike gave me presentation. I did, yeah. Uh, anybody see it yet? No, you know what? Uh, it was showing before, but not not anymore. All right, try again. On air showing screen. Mm. Uh, Anything? Uh, well, it, it says that it's showing the screen. Okay, what? Well, somebody needs to mute. Hey, whoever joined and is using using their computer for audio, you need to mute. That's better. Okay, that was Maria Mendoza. So Andrea, so Andrea, I, I sorry to ask a silly question, but you joined um, access code six six zero seven zero nine eight one three, correct? Correct. I can see everybody. I can see everybody's name. Nicole, Patrick, Susie, Uzi. Yeah. I, you know, I could Andrew, I'm not name. sure. When, when I was speaking, your computer screen was visible, and then it went to just like the title screen. Yeah. So I, if there's anything you pressed while I was speaking, but it, it was available. I could see your desktop. Um, and then yeah, that was okay. Mike. So let's just try this one more time, and if it doesn't work, then uh, we'll we'll, we'll just have, work we'll have Mike. We'll have, we'll have Mike show the stuff. <laughs> right. So here, I'm going to take. I'm going to make me the organizer again. Uh, excuse me, the presenter. So, whoops. Hold on. Sorry for the hassle here, folks. Uh, There's always technical difficulties. Presenter. All right. So Andrea, I'm taking it away from you, and then I'm going to give it back. So Andrea, can you see my screen here? Uh, I sure can. Okay, all right, so now we're going to make you the presenter. All right, let me click the show my screen button. There no, we go. Back. There you go. Oh, nice. You can see my lovely busy desk desktop? Yeah. Oh, so no. do you have Tylenol right next to your desk to your desktop there? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't need that. <laughs> I know what's there. I put it away as I'm done. All right, let me scroll down and I'll grab that spreadsheet for that Jonathan wants to go over. Let's see the corrected one because Anna Maria sent me the corrected one because Jonathan forgot to. Hey, Andrea. Yes. Jonathan mentioned Jonathan mentioned that it was sent in an email. We you haven't sent it to us yet, correct? I sent this to Vince and asked Vince to forward it to all the benefit counselors. Oh, uh, I didn't wait. I didn't get anything. Because he, all right. I'll forward to everybody uh, later, not right now. Okay. I, um, I just because Vince is in charge of the benefit counselors, so I sent everything to Vince. Oh. All righty. So here we go. Now you can see why I had to restart my computer, and it's it's a trifle slow. Could be because of everything I have open, but. I'm always working on lots of stuff. But meanwhile, let's see password phrase. Let's go with um, spring is the first password. What was that again, Andrea? Spring is the first password. But you guys that are on the call, you won't have to tell me password unless you drop off. <laughs> All right, why isn't it opening up? There it is. All righty. So, Jonathan, which would, would, did you want to go through the Kaiser plans first, or what did you want to go through first? No, the, the Kaiser plans, as I mentioned, there's no Kaiser plans to review because it's different for each group. So, let's start with that health net full network. The full network. Okay, we'll start with the two full network plans. Okay. So, in the trust, uh, in this trust program, health net is the medical carrier. As I mentioned, some groups might have Kaiser alongside. 
but all of those will be unique to that particular group. But for all of the members, these are the same health net plans and rates that will be available um, to them. So the way that the health net works is there's both the health net full network and limited network, or the limited network is also called the Excel Care Network. Many groups will only offer the Excel Care Network, but just for your reference, um, the, the main difference is the full network has access to UCLA and Cedar sinai uh, hospitals and, and, their, um, and, and their affiliated uh, offices. So that's the big difference. So these rates will be higher because they have UCLA and Cedars in network. That's the largest difference. Now there are two plans available in the full network. One is, uh, you see the first one, the 9JE, and then the 9JM. They are very similar plans. Uh, the out-of-pocket maximums on both of them are $2,000 for the individual. One thing you'll notice about these health net plans is the annual out-of-pocket maximums are a three-tier, meaning you have an out-of-pocket maximum for the individual. If it's only two members, that's on there. And then if there's three or more members, then they have an additional $2,000. So again, $2,000 annual max on both of these plans for the individual. If you have a de one dependent on there, a total of $4,000 between the employee and their dependent. And if you have three or more, a com combined family, out-of-pocket maximum of 6000 And then everything else is pretty straightforward. The, the more expensive one has a $20 copay. The lower cost one has a $30 copay. And then the first one has a hospital copay of $500 per day, up to four-day maximum. And then the other plan has a 30% coinsurance. Outpatient surgery is a $500 copay for the richer plan, and then 30% coinsurance on the lower plan. Otherwise, the benefits are the same for ER, urgent care, ambulance, and prescription. Okay, so those and are the two what, plans. I was going to say, what were, the, what were the hospitals that they access on the full network? You said Cedar sinai and what was the other one? UCLA. And then they have all of the other hospitals and networks that the, that the, that the Excel Care Network has. So they have everything that the other network has plus UCLA and Cedars. Got it. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So, like John said, those are the full network plans, and you'll have individual plan summaries for them as well. But they'll be in this Excel spreadsheet. This Excel spreadsheet has all the plans that the that the trust offers. And then limited network next. Limited network next. Okay. Okay. So scrolling up. And wait a minute, I've got to go over because I think there's one other one. Yes, there is. Oh, I know, it's over here. There it is. Okay, so we'll have to go over a little bit. So there's the 20, the 20 copay one. Okay, go for it, Jonathan. Okay. So again, the, the plans we're looking at now, the ones that say Health Net Limited Network or also called Excel Care, again, the di major difference, these do not now have UCLA and Cedars, but by and large, all the other networks and, and doctors are the same as the, for the network we just looked at. The first two plans on here in the limited network are the exact same as the two that we just reviewed on the full network. So the benefit summaries are the same. Again, the only difference, it's not in plan design, but it's in the network because there's no UCLA or Cedars. So again, the same exact um, plan design for these first two plans. The third one listed is a step-down plan, and you'll notice the first thing is instead of the $2,000 annual maximum uh, amount, it goes up to $4,500. But for this plan, it's only a two-tier annual out-of-pocket max. So if you have one dependent or you have five dependents, you basically have another $4,500 annual, annual out-of-pocket max for them, so a combined worst-case scenario of $9,000 for the family. Doctor visits are also higher at $40. And then hospital, inpatient and outpatient is a 40% coinsurance. And then everything else is the same except urgent care is a $40 copay. Okay. okay. 
the, the last plan listed there is almost identical to the first one we looked at with the $2,000 annual max, $20 copay, five, but the difference is, is that for the hospital, instead of a $500 per day hospital copay, it's a flat $500. So it doesn't matter, matter if you're in there for one day, three days, four days, or 30 days, you're just going to pay $500 flat on that last plan listed in that. So that is the most rich plan offered. Oh, okay, so the other one. Okay, I see. Five hundred per day, and this one's five hundred. So this one's more expensive then. That, that one will be more expensive. Okay. Okay. Ready. So that's it for the limited network. Now we can go to the PPO network. Okay. Okay, the PPO network plans. We have two traditional PPO plans, and then we have one HSA plan. The first PPO plan has a $500 deductible for the individual, $1,000 for two members, and then $1,500 for uh, three or more. The uh, annual out-of-pocket maximum in-network is $3,000, $6,000, and $9,000, respectively, for single, two-party, and family. Out-of-network is double those amounts, $6,000, $12,000, $18,000. Doctor visits in network are twenty dollars for both uh, your regular doctor as well as specialist, and then it's coinsurance in network is twenty percent on the remaining services. Out of network is a forty percent coinsurance across the board. You can see for ambulance and ER, it's a fifty dollar and a hundred dollar copay plus twenty percent respectively, and then you can see the prescription drugs copays. Now, all of these PPO plans have a $100 brand deductible, both PPO plans, excuse me, on brand name only. So $100 brand deductible has to be met for, for, for level two and level three drugs. Okay, the second PPO plan is similar, except instead of a $500 deductible, it's $1,000, and then $2,000 deductible for two or more, and $3,000 for family. But the annual out-of-pocket maximums are the same. And the doctor visits are $30 instead of $20. But the coinsurance in-network and out-of-network is the same as the other plan, 20% in-network, 40% out. So very similar, and the prescription's identical. Okay. Okay. Now, the HSA plan is um, has a $1,500 deductible for the individual and $3,000 for family. And then it has the annual out-of-pocket maximum. Now, it's to be noted, and you, most of you may know this, one of the biggest differences between traditional PPO plans and HSA plans is traditional PPO plans, like the first two plans we reviewed, have what's called embedded deductibles, meaning if it's you and your dependents on the plan, each of you have, your deductibles are in separate buckets. So if it's, if, it's, if it's me, my wife, and my children on it, and I'm on one of the PPO plans, if only I have to go to the hospital, then I just have my, and I'm on that first PPO plan, I just have a $500 deductible for myself, and then I don't have to worry about the family deductible. However, on the HSA, it's what's called an aggregate deductible. So if I have any dependents on that HSA plan, I not only have to satisfy the individual deductible of $1,500, I, in fact, have to satisfy the whole $3,000 deductible for the entire family before it, any insurance kicks in for me or any of my family members. Also on the traditional PPO plans, doctor visits are excluded from the deductible, but on the HSA plan, everything, including pharmacy, go towards that initial deductible. So there's no insurance coverage other than the preventative services covered at 100% on the HSA plan until the deductible is met. And if I have any dependents, I've got to pay that first $3,000 out of pocket before anything kicks in. However, the out of network, one of the benefits of the HSA is the out of network and in network are actually combined annual out of pocket maximums, where on the traditional PPO plans, they're separate. That's one of the advantages on the HSA, you have a combined in network and out of net network out annual out of pocket maximum. Jonathan, okay, I have a question. Yep. I just, this is Susie Stokes. I just did a group 
um, where the HSA, the, the broker, told us, this was just last week, and it's an anthem, but they said they would gotten an email saying that the, um, what you just talked about, the embedded, where it's, you know, whether it's one person or three, they weren't doing that anymore. And I didn't know if maybe was that just Anthem? Yeah, and it's not just Anthem, it's that particular plan with Anthem. So there are some HSA plans that have oh. those embedded. And very often those might be on small group plans. I don't know if this is small group or large group that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But on, uh, but, and that's a really good question. Thank you for clarifying. But um, yes, yeah, this HSA plan is an aggregate deductible. So it's, okay. it's combined. It's a combined family deductible. Um, Thank you. But but you're exactly right. Some HSA plans now, especially post Affordable Care Act, will will have the embedded deductible, so separate. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. So after that deductible is met, then you have a 20% coinsurance on all services in network, 50% coinsurance out of network. Okay. And that's it for that. Salud? Salud. Okay, now the Salud plans, there's two Salud plans, and, and you'll see some groups offer these plans and some not. The Salud is an eight, they're eight, they're a third type of HMO network. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Salud network, the Salud network uh, is uh, a unique HMO offering because it has coverage here um, in Southern California. But it also has a, a large network of providers in the Baja California area in what's called the Simpson network. So members that subscribe to the Salud plan have coverage not only in the U.S. or in Southern California, but they can go across the border to Tijuana and some of the other neighboring cities and receive coverage in the Simpson network. And they get much more coverage over there, meaning their co-payments co are a lot lower for doctor visits at hospital stays. Um, this summary does not reflect the coverage in Mexico, but the detailed benefit summaries that you'll be email, emailed over if you haven't received them yet do have that coverage in Mexico. Um, and Jonathan, the Salud, I, I have the summer detailed summary for the Salud B11, but I haven't yet to receive it for the Salud, the new one, the new plan in okay. 2016. Okay. So if you could send that over, I'd appreciate it. Okay, we'll get that over to you. Um, now, the Salud is, even though it has coverage here in Southern California, the network is much smaller than the other networks that we've looked at so far. It's a very reduced network. There's fewer hospitals and doctor offices, but the cost is a lot lower for the coverage, and again, you have the, the added benefit is coverage in, in the northern part of, of um, Baja California. So there's two plans, a high and a low. The high one here has a $1,500 annual out-of-pocket max in, in the Southern California area, $3,000 for two-party, $4,500 for family, $15 copay, and then hospital is just a 20% coinsurance. The low cost, lower cost Salud EMOS plan has a $4,500 annual out-of-pocket max and $9,000 for the family, $40 doctor visit, 40% coinsurance. Um, so again, we'll get you the detailed benefit summaries for both of those, and you can also see what the coverage is if they use the Simpson network south of the border. Now, Jonathan, a lot of your company you, you know, that we do are up in, in the Ventura County. Are there some uh, uh, network doctors up in the Ventura County area? Because I thought There's most not of the yeah, so you, what you'll find is for those of you enrolling in the Ventura County area, you will not see these offered for these, the groups in Ventura County because there's not a network of doctors for them. So it's really only the group that you'll be enrolling in Los Angeles and South where you will see the salute options. All righty. I'm having trouble. My computer screen is frozen. Um, oh, but okay. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask real quick, uh, John, were you, were you able to get help to not have a out the paper enrollment paper form? All right, my my screen unfroze finally. Good. <laughs> All right, good. 
So if we go over to the uh, MetLife. But wait, before we go to MetLife, I want to I ask that question about the Health Net enrollment yeah. form. Do are we going to do everything electronic on Harmony, or are we going to have to fill out Health Net enrollment forms? Everything electronic. Yay! And I still yeah. need the Health Net data return template from you. What is that? The you know the or our, or our sending our regular Excel data return to yeah all we're doing is all, all all you're doing is sending after the post enrollment reports that you get from Harmony or what we'll be submitting to the TPA for them to process okay so I'll give them to you and you'll take care of who they are who yep. they need to go to yes okay then we're ready to go to MetLife okay. Okay, so we have, so now switching from medical to dental, we have two dental HMO options and two dental PPO options. However, they are with different carriers. So the dental HMO is with the MetLife. We have two plans, the high option, which is the Met85 plan, and the lower option, Met185. Basically, as you know, with dental HMO plans, uh, there's the fee schedule. And so the higher option plan will cost a little more per month, but it's lower co-pays on services um, uh, compared with the, the low-cost option. So you can see here are just the highlights of some of the more uh, popular dental service items and what the fee schedule co-pays are. The detailed listing will be in the documents that you have access to um, in, in Harmony or, or emailed over. Um, but with these also, um, everything can be done electronically. So the one thing is for any new, this is only for people that are newly enrolled, are newly enrolling in any of the dental HMO, there just needs to be an option for them to choose uh, a primary uh, dentist to enter into their right. can over. So we will have uh, electronic provider directories, but also we'll have the website if need be where um, Dentists can be looked up at MetLife.com. Yeah, and is it okay, Jonathan, in our if in our enrollment system? Because when I set it for required, you know, to collect the primary care provider, uh, those that are you know not new, it's going to require it from them as well. Is it okay for us to to write uh, keep the same or 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 assign provider if yes. the new yes. one wants yeah. assigned? Yeah, they just want to auto assign. Yes. Okay, so we can do auto assign for the new new ones coming on board, and we can just write keep the same if they're an existing client that currently has it. That's correct. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, so you can see there's uh, just the last note. They both have orthodontics covered, um, basic orthodontics covered, and then you can see what the copays are for that on these dental HMO plans. Okay. Um, Anybody have any questions on anything that we've done so far uh, before we continue on? Because we're about halfway through uh, for the medical plan with HealthNet, the, the dental DHMO. You know, if you're on, now's your chance to ask questions. Passwords. Yeah, we did Spring, and the next one is going to be uh, Have. Spring Have. So the, <clears throat> so the first word is spring, like S-P-R-I-N-G? And the second word is has, H-A-S. Oh, has. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Then ready for, are we ready for principal, Jonathan? Yes, principal. Andrea, I have a question. Um, is, there gonna, is there a waiting period on that MetLife Dental? No, thank you for asking. There's no waiting period. Okay, thanks. Not no waiting period for services, obviously. I mean, there's the normal waiting period that employees have before they're eligible at the company, but no waiting period on services. Okay, that's what I mean. Thank you. Great question. Okay, principal. Great. So just as a note, for those, um, so MetLife was the current PPO carrier, but we're moving it from MetLife to principal on the dental PPO. So that's one thing that you may need to review with the employees. So you'll see there's still the two current MetLife PPO plans. That's just to show by way of contrast 
but it's really the ones that say principal that will be offered. Okay, so there's two dental PPO plans, a high option and a low option with principal. So, one, so the way that principal works is instead of just the traditional PPO and out-of-network coverage, which they have for both plans, they have a third tier, which is their EPO network. So for those of you that may be unfamiliar with it, the EPO is almost like a miniature PPO network. So it works the same as a PPO network. You've got a large network of providers, larger than the HMO network, but not, but it's a reduced network size compared to the full PPO. But as a result, the principal has better contracts with the providers in the EPO network. So it, it'll cost the members less for any services they get going to an EPO provider compared with the dental, and they'll have a lower deductible, and they'll have a higher max. So to go over it first on the high option PPO with principal, if they go to a dentist in the EPO network, they have a $25 deductible on the individual, $3,000 annual max, so they'll get covered up to $3,000 annually. Preventative services, Deductibles waived, it's covered at 100%. Basic services are at 80% coinsurance. Major service is 50%. And orthodontia is covered up to $1,500. Okay? If they go to a PPO provider, so again, a contracted PPO provider, it'll be a $50 deductible on the individual, up to $2,000 on the calendar year max and then also 100% preventative, 80% basic, 50% uh, major, also $1,500 orthodontia, and then there's the out-of-network coverage there also, which is further reduced. Now, a couple things. If they go to a dentist that's in the EPO network, it's not like an HMO where they need to be assigned or anything like that. They can go online and search for a dentist to see if they're in the EPO network, or if they just happen to go to somebody who happens to be contracted in the EPO, they will automatically get the higher coverage on the EPO network. Um, if they go to a PPO provider first, or even out of network, and use that tooth, let's say they go to a, just a PPO provider and they use up their full $2,000, they can then go to an EPO provider and they would still have the, the difference between the EPO and the PPO calendar year max of $1,000. So if they went to PPO, got $2,000 of services, they could still go to an EPO provider and get an additional $1,000 of services. And Jonathan, Anna Maria was saying something that you, they can use principal down in Mexico? Yeah, so I, I was going to get to that after I do the low option. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, so, so just on the low option PPO, if you go to, um, so on the low option PPO, it's the same thing. There's the EPO network, PPO network, and out of network. The low option PPO, the out of network reimbursements are based on a maximum allowable charge, whereas the high option one, it's a UCR. Um, oh, I think most of you may know the difference, but basically at, at the UCR, you're going to get a higher reimbursement rate generally than you will with a maximum allowable charge. So one, the out of network will be better generally on the high option PPO. Um, but in the low option PPO, the calendar year max is only $1,500 for the EPO and the PPO. Um, but the coinsurance is 100% preventative, 80% basic, and 50% major, just like the high option. But also orthodontia is not covered on the low option PPO, which it is on the high option PPO. There are all, uh, you can let employees know if you want that the rates are locked in for two years. So if they sign up, their rates will not change next year renewal. Um, and in addition, as Andrea brought up, and we'll get you more information on this, I'm waiting to, to receive the details. Just like on those Salud uh, medical plans I discussed, Principal actually has a network of dentists uh, in parts of Mexico where members can go and receive coverage, they get the same level of coverage, but the fees and charges are much lower in Mexico. So for example, if you have a $3,000 maximum in Mexico, it's going to go a lot further at these providers than you will um, at the providers here in California. 
So we'll have more information on that, but that's something that we think is going to be a big benefit to review. Uh, and just so you know, even in those instances where we're, so we're, we're um, for most of the groups that you'll be doing the enrollments at, we're going to be out there in advance doing group meetings, and we'll be sure to highlight a lot of this. So our goal is that by the time they're sitting down with you in the one-on-one -on -one meetings, they've already had the overview and they've been educated, and it's not the first time that they've been um, delivered this information. Okay, now the principal, uh, we can also do electronic. We don't have to fill out paper enrollment forms. That's exactly right. Principal is electronic. Okay, and I forgot to ask, if you do Kaiser, are we going to are we going to be able to do electronic, or is no. Kaiser going to? No. Kaiser. Yeah. So Kaiser is the so when Kaiser is being enrolled, one of the things that we'll have the employees will have Kaiser applications to fill out and we may, we'll provide those to you electronically just in case for whatever reason they don't have one or whatever that you can hopefully print on the spot but that shouldn't be the norm. They should all have the Kaiser applications already in their hand when they sit down with you. Um, so that's the only, um, um, that's one of the few okay. items, where, areas where they will have to actually physically fill out an application. So and I agree. Kaiser, is, Kaiser is such a large network and they're the only one so far that seldom will let us do electronic. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. It's um, yeah. It's a, it's a huge process. You would think it would be easier for them too. Yeah, I know. I agree, one hundred percent. Onward. To okay. So onward to the vision. So the vision has some really neat features that we we really want to emphasize. So one of some of the talking points here, and you received some there's uh, in the email. I don't know if it went out to you yet, or at least will. There's some promotional items on on the vision. It's definitely worth reviewing, but I'm going to tell. Uh, I'm just going to want to point out some of the things that we're really explaining to the members on the IMED. So currently, we're offering VSP through MetLife, but we're switching from VSP to IMED as the replacement carrier for Vision. So here's Here's the reason why IMED basically matched the same coverage uh, of that VSP has in place. They also offered a four-year rate guarantee, which is huge. And then there's some other uh, additional benefits. So first, just to talk about the coverage, we have a high option vision and a low option vision. The high option vision is a $5 exam copay every 12 months. The low option is a $10 copay every 12 months. The high option has a $10 copay for materials. On the low option, it's a $25 copay. On the high option, every 12 months, you get up to $150 coverage, and then you get a 20% discount on frames. It's $130 maximum coverage allotment on the low option, and then 20% on the remaining amount. Same thing with, and, and except on the low option, it's every 24 months for frames. So that's a big difference we like to point out. High option, they get frames allotment every 12 months. And then uh, on the low option, it's every 24 months. Contacts are both every 12 months on the high and low option. But you get up to $150 on the high option and every up to $130 on the low option. OK. Um, something else that we'd just like to clarify, the frequency of every 12 months or every 24 months, uh, vision, the frequency is based on usage. So what that means, is they can get, let's say, their frame allotment of $150 every 12 months. But that's not based on calendar year or policy year. That's based on utilization. So it's, it's 12 months from the last time they used it. Uh, so that's the way that it's measured. We always like to remind subscribers. Some of them have the understanding, hey, I can go you know, at the end of December, and then January hits, and I can go again and get another $150. It doesn't work that way. It's 12 months or 24 months from the date of utilization. Okay, both, both of these plans, so for any employees you're sitting with that were on the VSP currently, you can also let them know that the rates have gone down. They're 20% lower than the current VSP rates. Again, there's also a four-year rate guarantee. Now, some of the other advantages of IMED that are, uh, one, IMED has more retailers than VSP. So Lens Crafters is in network. Target, Sears Optical are also in network, whereas with VSP they were not. And not only that, so there's a couple benefits 
that are offered through the trust and, and IMED. They have what's called the Freedom Pass. So if they go to Target or Sears to purchase their frames, they can buy any pair of frames regardless of the cost. So even let's say they're on the high option plan that normally has $150 frame allowance. If they go to Target or Sears to, to purchase their frames, it doesn't matter what brand. It can be any designer brand. It can be over, let's say, it's $300 pair of frames. Even if they only have a $150 frame allotment, they can get it covered at 100%. So again, if they go to Sears or Target, they can get any frames there covered at 100%. Um, and, and Andrea's pulling it up right now, the Freedom Pass, so you'll have a document on that. And this explains it. Now, can, does IMED use Walmart or Costco at all? No, I mean, there's out of network, but those are, uh, those are not uh, in network. OK. But, so here's the, de here's the detail of how it works. So it, just to scroll, Andrew, can you scroll down? Just to, so looking at, let's just say there's that pair of Ray-Bans right there. Let's say that that, um, with the, with the Ray-Bans, let's, there's a $180 pair of frames. Normally, if you're on that low plan, you get $130 covered, which means they would have a $50 remaining cost on that. But if they go and purchase at Target or Sears, that $50 is erased because it's covered at 100%. So that's really big. Um, and you can see all of the different brands that are offered at um, Target or Sears. Donna Karen, Massimo, uh, Armani Change, Oakley Ray-Ban, Coach Vogue. Uh, so, so again, Premier Designer covered at 100%. So that's one of the things we're really emphasizing to members. Also, they have... Um, the ability to save, um, there's one, Sunglass Hut is owned by the same parent company as IMED. They can also receive a credit of up to, like, I believe, $50 that's in there. Here it is. Yep. So they'll get $20 off any normal uh, sunglasses non-prescription at, at Sunglass Hut. Or if the glasses are over $200, they'll get $50 off. So a huge discount just for being a member. So that's another included perk. <laughs> so again, IMED, we're really excited about it. It's a, really, it's a huge improvement, um, lower cost, um, same benefit coverage, but also more re has now larger retailers and has some other perks that the current vision doesn't ha have. Okay. Okay. Any question on uh, any of the products that we've covered so far? On the on the vision um, for the uh, for the allowance, can that be used um, for both contacts and frames, or is it one or the other? Great question. On the um, it, it's it's both. Okay. Thanks. Okay. 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 So next, um, you'll start seeing some of. Um, so if we, next, we're going to go to the voluntary life AD and D. These are pretty straightforward. Um, just some highlights. Uh, basically, you can purchase. The members can purchase in increments of ten thousand dollars for themselves or the spouse. Two thousand dollars for children. The initial only the first time that they're offered it. Um, can they, they get up to five times their salary? Guaranteed issue, not to exceed $500,000. Spouse, they can get up to 100% of the employee elected amount in increments of $10,000, but not to exceed $250,000. And then children, they have a $10,000 cap. Other than that, yeah. uh, yep. Okay. I, uh, because you've done, you did Unum last year, correct? With the with the yes. with the group with the trust. So, what is um, the step amount that they can get guaranteed issue if it's not the first time? Like, can yeah, they get not, ten thousand? Yes. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. One increment. One increment. 
they can get without EOI. One, one increment, that's right, if they okay. want to increase it. Okay, otherwise, aside from the five times salary, they the guaranteed issue amount for the employee is $200,000, which is really high. It's a really good benefit that we're excited about. Um, spouse is $50,000, and then children up to $10,000. So again, that's the GI amount. If they apply for more than that, then they're going to have to, you know, do a standard uh, questionnaire. Uh, that's if that's not your responsibility. They'll get sent that separately. Um, and then the wait, wait, Johnson. So you'll take care of all the EOIs that have to be done then after looking at what's what's been uh, enrolled. Yes. Yeah, that you you as the enrollers will not have to worry about about going over that information with them. So what we would like okay. to just to be clear, what we would like is just um, there'll be general applications there for them to put in the basic information. We'd like you to, if it's being offered, to just review what the availability is brief, uh, briefly. But then that's that's basically it. If they're if they're applying for anything above the guaranteed issue amount or anything else needs to be filled out, that's not. Um, you can let them know they'll have to do that, but that's going to be done separately from you. That's because that's that's just too much work and time. Got it. And then another quick question on the spouse: um, Is the rates based on the spouse age or the employee age? Um, that is a good question. It is. Um, let's see the spouse. Let me see. Um, can you scroll down? I want to see what's included on here on the rates. Um, I believe it's on the spouse's age. Um, it's on the spouse's age. Or you know what? The spouse, and I, wait, let me clarify. I need to revisit that. I actually thought it was a flat rate for the spouses. But let me let me go back and I'll. I'll um, but that makes a difference in the check. setup because you got to know what it's based on, the, the spouse's uh, premium. Their age or the employee's age, because it's lean, you know, through the yeah. Employer. No, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's based on the spouse's age. But I'll clarify for you. I just need to look at the detailed benefit summary. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. And then, so next, the LTD. Uh. So they have so UNIM. There's um. They have the um, two tiered options here, um, and again on the LTD, the coverage is 60% of the earnings up to $6,000 per month, um, elimination period of 180 days before the benefits uh, kick in. So then you can look at the benefit duration, the differences. So the first plan scroll, if you scroll down, um, the first one, the LTD benefits are payable for the period during which you continue to meet the definition of disability for up to five years. And then the second one is LTD benefits are payable for the period during which you continue to meet the definition of disability up to the Social Security normal retirement age. So you can see, um, you know, that second one is, is much, much longer. Um, so there's a definition of disability, partial and total disabilities included. Um, anyway, other things, but basically, um, there is a pre-existing on it for um, on on the benefit. Um, there's a survivor benefit of up to three months, and um, I, I just scroll down. I mean, I you don't need to spend too much time on any of these details. They'll have inserts on it that they can look. But you can see the the costs for the uh, for the policies based on if you're doing the five year or up to Social Security age. Yeah, obviously it'll cost more when it lasts longer. Um, yep. Now, do you do you generally offer both uh, plans to employees, or do you usually pick for for each group? Um, when we offer, we usually offer both. So, but just to let you know, there's you'll. Few, there will be few cases where you'll probably see these plans offered. They're not um, offered. They're not offered heavily. There will be some groups, but um, a majority will have medical, dental, vision, but only a few will have even these life or disability products. Okay. Okay, and then we have question. the basic question. Yeah. Question. 
um, on the long-term disability in that court mix with anything else? Did, did you say does it, so, co it, it, co it coordinates so with that? Yeah, does it that? coordinate with state or anything else? It does. It does. It does, uh, it does coordinate, and it's coordinated benefit. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll go on to the basic life. Okay, so this is just, obviously, you won't need to worry about the rates here, but basically just as an overview, some of the groups who offer flat, you know, basic life to their employees that they cover, it'll be either um, $10,000, $25,000, $50,000, $50, and they, they both are the same. Their age reductions are, they reduce to 65% at, I believe, uh, what's the, um, can you scroll to the left, Andrea? At age 65, they go to 65. At 70, it goes down to 50%. And then that's, that's it. After that, there's no further reduction. So that's okay. it. Now, that'll be just something to cover. If the employer is offering it, you can just review to say, hey, as, it, as an offered benefit, and it'll be in there, whether it's a $10,000, $25,000, or 50000 Does this, this is usually the employer paid option. It's not yeah. the important for. That's exactly right. So there's the voluntary one, which we already uh, reviewed, and then there's this uh, group one. Okay. Now for UNUM, you are, I think you already said that uh, we're basically going to, anybody who's getting it new or, or increasing what they have, you'll be getting the EOI forms and enrollment UNUM applications to them at a later date because they take time. Well, yeah, any of the any of the details, if there's an application, if they're going above the guaranteed issue. But for the basic, just if there's just a basic application, we will have in, mm -hmm. included. But what, what I'm waiting for to see is if actually we can just do that electronically as well, and, 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 and which I think we can, provide it over. Um, as long as it's in the system, we can just um, okay. process that with UNAM directly all. That would be great because we capture beneficiary information and all that information when it's a life insurance in our in Harmony. It's the same information that they have to put on the application is captured in Harmony. Great. Um, okay, perfect. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's, it. that's it for the benefits again. In some cases, you will see some other benefits or carriers alongside. And we'll, on the benefit enrollment guide, it'll just have the explanation of what those are. Um, but most of the, the, the employees you'll be meeting with are, you know, very familiar with the benefits. They're having, you know, a lot of them are similar year after year. Um, and I know a lot of you, again, have, have handled and worked on this in the past. But are there any overall questions on any of the benefits we've reviewed? Um, so you do, you do have clients that offer a couple benefits in the trust and then they have other benefits that they wanted to keep offering that aren't in the trust. And that's why you'll see on the enrollment guide, you know, other plans, not health net or not the, you know, principal dental or IMED vision because they, they kept their plans that they had elsewhere. That's right. That's exactly right. So that's exactly right. Okay, anybody have any other questions for Jonathan while we have him on the on the line? Hey, Jonathan, we sure thank you for working hard to get this uh, the majority of this enrollment electronic. And I, I knew when I saw Kaiser on the list that we would have difficulty with Kaiser, but that's part of the course. Generally shorter than they used to be, but, um, and also we have a lot of groups that are just dropping Kaiser altogether. So hopefully this will be a much um, easier and, and simpler uh, renewal on the, on the core products um, than in years past. And, um, you know, a lot of the groups are very excited about the new uh, group chassis products, New Colonial, which will be able to be offered now. Yeah. Mike, did you want to go? Um 
uh, over the, the group products that we're offering now to, to all the groups for the trust? You bet. So let me uh, let me take the I'll take the controls for a second. Yes, I'll let you do that because you have uh, more better information on the the group products. So I wanted you to go over those. All right. Okay, Andrew, can you see my screen right now? I can. Okay, so uh, this is not an official document for anybody. It's just our system software, and down below I've got some you know custom notes um, that I've put in that uh, helped me along the way. So, <clears throat> all right, so here's what we did. We went to Colonial, and based upon uh, the task at hand, uh, we wanted to make sure we had the ability to offer all, a, at least some guaranteed issue coverages for all products that were going to be on the menu for ordering this year. So that means we got group accident, group disability, group critical um, care with uh, group critical illness with cancer, excuse me, <coughs> group medical bridge, and whole life 1000. And uh, and I just just now uncovered a discrepancy, but I'll I'll um, I'll get to that in just a second. So um, the accounts that are reworks, they have most of them have mostly individual portable products like you know DI one thousand, like uh, Accident one point oh, et cetera, or cancer or critical illness. All of those plans for any employee that wants to keep their plan in place can keep that plan in place. It's okay. Nothing's being taken away. But anybody who wants to write any new policy can only choose from the plans that you see right here. So let's just go through these one at a time. Um, so group, oh, I didn't spell very well here. I can see that. Um, so the first one is group disability, GDIS. Uh, it's going to be, uh, we want everybody to push post-tax. Why do we want to push post-tax? We want to push post-tax for the, uh, these are primarily, you know, they're not, most of the trust groups are not large, so they've got smaller HR staff, and it'll be easier for them if they don't have to process the W-2 information and add the payroll, uh, the benefit for disability to the payroll check. Um, if an employee goes out on a disability, files for a claim with Colonial and receives that claim. So obviously if somebody wants to pre-tax it, they certainly can, but um, Broker and I talked about this entire effort, which was driven to streamlining and making as clean as possible uh, the open enrollment and the servicing for these plans as we go forward. So it's a guaranteed issue. Uh, the guaranteed issue on disability, it's uh, an Andrea's document, but their guaranteed issue up to $4,000 a month in benefits, um, although they can take up to $7,500, so the amount from $4,000 up to $7,500 is underwritten, just like in the normal group disability offering. It's off the job, it's AA risk rates. The only benefit periods that are available are 6 and 12 months. Now, I don't have that up here, uh, but I'll add it right now. So again, 6 and 12 months are the only ones that are available. No 24 months. Well, that's okay. We don't sell that many 24 months because it's more expensive. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's kind of like a non-issue. Um, the elimination periods are 7-7, 14-14, seven, seven, and 30-30 and pre-existing conditions still apply. Pre-exes are going to apply across the board. So let's go to the next one, accident, GACC. Uh, that'll be this little baby right across here going across the line. Uh, it'll be pre-taxed. We're going to offer plans one and three. It's a guaranteed issue. Pre-existing conditions, conditions apply. Uh, let's see if I have anything else. 
Um, do, 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 do. They have the sickness and uh, hospital confinement rider on employee and family with no participation requirement. And we already mentioned PREAC, so we're good to go there. Um, now, I just noticed that I've got group critical care, and in my brain I had group critical care, but on his underwriting offer, um, excuse me, Wayne laid out group critical illness with cancer. So it's going to let's go with group critical illness with cancer, and then I'll fix all the I'll fix my uh, information in that. Um, so group critical illness with cancer is a guaranteed issue. Uh, there's a GI maximum of twenty thousand dollars. They can apply for hire, but any amount higher is going to be underwritten. And if you employee or spouse or dependent children apply, it's uh, fifty percent of the. Uh, employees benefit and pre-existing conditions apply once again. Hospital confinement or group medical bridge 1.0, that is going to be a guaranteed issue benefit. We're going to do plans one and two. Let's do two first. Two is going to be plan two, level two, option one. So level two is a thousand dollar benefit. Option one is a $500 tier one, $1,000 tier two, $1,500 max for calendar year outpatient surgery benefit. That's for anybody that wants to apply for the group medical bridge. If that employee is enrolled in an HSA plan, they are restricted to plan one. So if they have an HSA plan for medical, then they only have plan one, which is, of course, plan two and there's no outpatient surgery benefit, it'll be less expensive for them. And anybody can have plan one if they want it. If they don't want outpatient surgery benefits, uh, but rather the lower premium that goes with plan one because there are no outpatient surgery benefits, by all means, uh, let them have their way. Let them hey, have Mike, plan. quick quick question. The employees that get the HealthNet HSA plan, but they don't establish an HSA account, can they still get the plan two if they want because they don't have an HSA account established? That is, it is correct and it's true and um, I kind of on the fly elected not to go into all the detail um, to keep it simpler okay. for the employee. But for everybody that understands this, um, it, what Andrew said is exactly true. So the law says that if somebody is enrolled in an HSA compatible plan, uh, that's fine and dandy, um, but if they enroll in a health savings account where they're putting money into a uh, an account that they're going to use to withdraw later to make payments for medical expenses, uh, a health savings account, then they cannot have Plan 2, which means those people can only have Plan 1. So anybody who opens up a HSA plan for medical, they're not going to open up an HSA savings account. They can have plan two, no problem. So let's stop there. Any questions about that? <clears throat> Silence is golden. Okay. Um, so Andrea, thanks for bringing it up, but sometimes it gets a little complex and I just take the easier route and just do a bigger dividing line. We're good to go. Next one is uh, Whole Life. We have Whole Life 1000 on the menu. The guaranteed issue limits are whatever that person's age band will allow them to purchase for $18 per week to a maximum of $75,000. And let's see here. Spouse and standalone is available as well as all riders. They are available with standard underwriting, which means please make sure and discuss the long-term care rider uh, because of its popularity. Uh, that covers the colonial offering. We're not doing, and Andrew, tell me if you're going to get to this, no benefit statements anywhere, anywhere. Uh, we're trying to keep no, it as extreme as possible. Yeah, it's basically because we're trying to keep our one-on-one -on -one meetings as uh, short as possible, we're just doing the core that the group wants enrolled, and we're uh, doing just the colonial plans, no benefit statements or anything else. And like, and Jonathan was able to get us relieved of most of the paperwork. 
Uh, Jonathan, are the majority of the groups restricting the number of plans offered so that we don't have to go through every medical plan with the employees? Yeah, we don't have any groups that offer all plans. Thank goodness. God bless you. And God bless you. Yeah. So it should some only offer one of each or, or something like that. But for the most part, it's a hybrid. You know, um, and you know, in my experience, when you are reviewing multiple medical plans, my recommendation is to to really do it kind of the way that that I did. Just treat them all together. So talk about them at the same time and talk about what's common, and then just point out any dissimilarities. And I, you guys, I mean, you guys do this day in day out, but I mean, really, just be as we want to make sure that the essentials are communicated. What's unique about each plan, but just keep it minimal and, and highlight only what's necessary. And like you mentioned, you, for the most part, you're already going to go on out and present at these uh, core plans in a group meeting. So by, when we come do the one on one, they'll have already had their presentation. So they should come and sit with you and know their choices. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at least that's the goal. We're hoping that both, uh, there's always going to be the anomalies that go over it when you get there, but thank goodness there's not as many because I remember one year one of the groups offered every single plan and they we didn't have that pre-enrollment meeting, so it was taking an hour to two hours a person. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and the client was not happy. Yeah. I think that was Airborne Technologies. Yes, it was. Andrea? Yes. This is Susie. Um, uh -huh. Two things. Number one, Mike just mentioned the long-term care on whole life. Has that been approved or is, is he? Yes, it's, a, it's approved in California as of November 15th. A whole life? Uh-huh, a yes. whole life. Yes. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is for group critical illness, um, which I haven't enrolled in years, can you, would you, when you get a chance, send us the uh, proper I, uh, document I think, order number? I think Wayne may have miswrote. I think Wayne was referring to group critical care, but um, Mike and I will clarify that with him. Yeah. And I think he did, too, because I specifically asked for group critical care. Okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that we're going to be doing group critical care. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, the, plans that, from the plans that we're familiar with. And Any other questions up. from anybody? Okay, Jonathan, Mike, any other comments on the trust before we end? Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, you go ahead and go first. If you have anything, then I do have a couple of things. Um, I, I don't, I'm good on my end. Okay, so the only thing I wanted to add in on my side is just to, even though this has the appearance of being, you know, well organized and everybody knows what they're doing and all that kind of stuff, don't forget that we always walk in the door and find out that the night before, the HR director and the owner sat down and decided to make logistics changes. So they may not have changed their plans around or any of that, but just make sure and walk in the door. As soon as you put your briefcase down, talk to the correct person in HR, uh, all noted on the enrollment guide, and take five minutes and review the plan uh, and just make sure that everything is as it was originally discussed inside the open enrollment guide because they may have changed a few things around about, they could have even changed the times for the meetings. But that way there's no surprises for you, which means no surprises for our client and the employees. So please just remember to do that first thing when you walk in the door, review the plan, and I think everything will just go greasy smooth. And that's all I really have. Okay. Um, uh, uh, final password is going to be arrive. So we have spring has arrived. And I thank everybody for being on the call because it's always best when we have benefit counselors to kind of ask the questions as we're going through the training. And we look forward to helping um, Jonathan out with many trust cases in the next well, however many weeks we have left uh, these, until May 31st and the uh, effective date of June 1st for all these accounts. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.